good morning, Saturday. We're in a hotel. Uh, we're off up to a wedding. Um, I have to perform a wedding for a family member today. Get to. And just as we hope that you have your morning devotion or whenever time devotion, even when you're on vacation or away from home, we do too. <clears throat> and then we're in God's Word. Of course, sometimes you open God's Word and you read something that's not uh, not necessarily encouraging because you know there's different parts. If you're uh, it, the, perhaps the part that you're reading for today is kind of dark, like yesterday's was and today's is, but the next three days are not. The next three days are back to encouragement. So, so we're going to sing the the third and fourth verses of yesterday's hymn. No, we don't have the guitar along. <clears throat> Didn't want to bring that plus the music stand and extra books and okay. Karen says yeah, shut up. That's enough. <clears throat> that's enough chatter. Okay. So <laughs> hope you can sing with us. A cappella. Though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us, we tremble not, we fear no ill. They shall not overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will. He can harm us none. He's judged, the deed is done. One little word can fell him. The word they still shall let remain. Nor any thanks have for it. He's by our side upon the plain with his good gifts and spirit. And take they our life, good fame, child and wife. Though these all be gone, our victory has been won. The kingdom ours remaineth. <clears throat> The Revelation, the Revelation to John, chapter 13, verse 11, the second beast. Then I saw another beast arising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence, and makes the earth and its habitants worship the first beast, whose mortal wound was healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. And by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of the man. And his number is 666. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm not sure where to start. Because there's people have are so wound up about this. Uh, the beast and the 666 and so on. And the mark of the beast. And don't get the mark of the beast. <sighs> First of all, can I remind you that these are not beasts that we're talking about in terms of what we see in our daily life, right? The beast is the symbol of what? That everything is symbolic. Uh, <clears throat> so the, one of the worst things people do with Revelation, the Revelation of St. John, is that they, they, they see all these symbols and uh, 
this refers to this and this refers to that and then all of a sudden they pull one out and that one's literal and like the thousand years boom, that's literal or the you know something like oh the mark a literal mark uh, no if if these 50 things are symbolic then so is the 51st um so what's going on allow me to refresh your memory because it uh, it is confusing enough I, I apologize for the repetition but we need to set this into its context we have three main prophecies they each have seven things in them that happen that each ramp up to almost the end of the world right and and things get worse and worse and worse and then it's you know almost the end of the world and uh, three times we go through that cycle and then there are little interludes in between them after the the seven uh, seals there was the silence in heaven and then this beautiful vision of uh, the, being in the presence of God after the seventh trumpet then there was this vision kind of recapitulating recapping the history of the tribulation that that the that the dragon that Satan pursued the woman uh, Mary and and tried to to take her son her child Jesus but he completed his work and ascended to heaven then he pursued the church this woman the church into the wilderness where God protected her <clears throat> so that was that vision of the tribulation then these visions of the two beasts uh, that the, that the church is under attack but tomorrow still in this interlude between the the second prophecy the seven trumpets and the final prophecy the seven bowls in this interlude between those two the vision of of the of the woman the church the vision of the beasts uh, but then also the vision of the of the lamb and and the complete number of those who are saved and three angels who promote who, who have good messages to give to us and the harvest of the earth uh, now it's time you know for the harvest to come so it's like the very end uh, the end of the world and the final judgment but yet not yet then there's the final repetition of that same cycle so we're in the middle there it's this picture of dark things but Monday hang in there till Monday Monday Tuesday Wednesday will be much more positive images you're welcome pastor Ra pastor Rago you uh, you get to have a good one so we're so we have the second beast the first beast represented all kinds of power the the power uh, and authority of various aspects of culture and government uh, government education um, entertainment uh, culture um, all these things that would be um, uh, would exercise power to inhibit or or oppress the people of God <clears throat> that would uh, that would insist on on um, uh, on obedience and and try to push away faith in Christ the second beast then is lesser uh, does not have that power and authority but it's it's primarily about deception and seduction and and it is false religion it is every effort and there have been hundreds and hundreds every effort to to turn people away from Christ into that earthly power and authority I, I see this all the time <clears throat> oh the government will save us right and, um, oh if only we had this person in government and and good Christian people who feel like if we just elected whatever then oh we would we could achieve if we could get the right laws passed if we could uh, prevail in the Supreme Court or something like that we could achieve a uh, um, a a time of peace and prosperity and freedom and everything would be good our little piece of heaven here heaven is not what we're seeking here right we know that there's not going to be heaven here and so uh, our solutions in earthly things if we got more technology people say oh if we just when we get to this point in our technology we'll solve all those problems if we uh, there are people who say if we could get this in our culture if I could persuade people through entertainment, yeah, whatever, they look to earthly things and those will be our salvation. The second beast says, 
oh, you should worship those things, right? And and turns us away from Christ. Now the the mark. We we often talk in baptism. Uh, we we say receive the the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one who's been redeemed by Christ who was crucified. That we we know that we are marked, not in a visible way. Uh, there's, you don't get a tattoo on your forehead. I hope. Um, and yet, and yet, you are changed because you belong to Christ, who was crucified. You bear the cross. Well, in the same way, those who abandon Christ have a, a spiritual, not a literal, not a not a chip embedded in your skin. Okay, not uh, not your credit card number or your social security number, um, uh, but rather. Your, your declaration of loyalty to the world instead of Christ. Uh, there are variations of things that people have over, over the centuries done that are similar to a real mark, um, uh, a sign that you, that you do not belong to Christ, but you belong instead to someone else. And a Christian, Christians have had to reject those things. But it's not just one thing. Uh, there are many examples of that. And so John says this calls for discernment. This calls for wisdom. That the believer needs to understand the, the theological reality, what God is doing behind the visible reality, behind the things we see going on around us. So what is God doing when something bad happens in your life? Clearly, it's not that he's punishing you, but he is blessing you in a different way. Challenging or steering or teaching or sharpening, preparing, giving you opportunity. God is working through all the things of your life. And what is Satan doing? That's a good question to ask, too. Now, we never wore, what would Satan do, bracelets? <laughs> but, but, you know, it's a helpful thought. What is Satan desiring in this for me to be afraid that's an important one satan wants me to be afraid satan wants me to count on these earthly things instead of on my heavenly father so uh yes the, it, john's revelation shows dark things and powers of the earth and and deceptive powers of false prophets but the believer in Christ has a clear guide and should not be deceived because God's word has told us already that all this would take place. And we've seen it again and again. We should be calm. And especially when we read Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday's readings to see that the Lamb of God has conquered all these things. Heavenly Father, save us from fear Oh, Lord, even Christian authors have written books to try to, to frighten us into belief. Lord, we turn to you in joy. Uh, even in the midst of the, the persecutions and terrors of the world, uh, even with the, the, the threats of the beast and the mark, Lord, we know we are already marked, sealed. We belong to you because your son Jesus has paid the price for us. Father, keep us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us in faith. Until the very end, when all the over and over again is done, and at last it is finished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you Peace. Amen. You have a great weekend.